Howdy. My name is Zeke. Chris Zeke Hand, to be specific. Yours isn't. About four months ago, I asked for and received tickets to L'Internationale des Feux Loto Québec, presented by TELUS. It was actually a performance by Atlas Pyro Vision Productions. But before I get ahead of myself, let me recite this. It's a poem called Fireworks, and it was written by Amy Lowell. You hate me, and I hate you, and we are so polite, we too. But whenever I see you, I burst apart and scatter the sky with my blazing heart. In spits and sparkles and stars and balls, buds into roses, flares and falls. Scarlet buttons and pale green discs, silver spirals and asterisks. Shoot and tremble in a mist, peppered with mauve and amethyst. I shine in the windows and light up the trees, and all because I hate you, if you please. And when you meet me, you rend asunder and go up in a flaming wonder of saffron cubes and crimson moons and wheels all amaranths and maroons, golden lozenges and spades, arrows of malachites and jades, patterns of copper, azure sheaves, as you mount you flash in glossy leaves, such fireworks as we make we too, because you hate me and I hate you. Okay, now that I got that out of the way, I can get on with my critique. There are two things to remember above and beyond anything else. A, I'm sorry that it took me so long to get this review up and on the internet, but there were some technical complications that made it impossible until now. I apologize. But given that the show was one night, even if I had been able to accomplish this earlier, you still would have missed the show. So while my timeliness sucks, it still doesn't help you in seeing the show. And B, despite everything that I'm about to say, the show was awesome, great, amazing, and pretty gosh darn cool as well. In trying to review the show, I must have seen it in a variety of forums two dozen times. The only reason to watch something 24 times if it's really, really good. Like, really good. As a consequence of watching and watching and watching some more, most of what I am about to say will sound negative. That's only because I've seen the videos of the show way too many times and would only like to see the good folks at Atlas Pyrovision, Pyrovision Productions, that's a mouthful to say, get even better than they already are. Did I mention that the one of in Jupiter? My understanding is that's the bestest and most impressive thing a pyrotechnical company can do. But let me backtrack slightly. To quote from the website, Le Concours International d'Art Pyrotechnique de Montréal, known for the past few years as l'International des Feux Loto Québec, presented by TELUS, was founded in 1985 at La Ronde, which was created for Expo 67, and ranks as the largest amusement park in Quebec. More than 5.7 million people attended the displays during that first season. As a result of the, this extraordinary success, the competition was brought back for the following year and has been an annual event ever since. At the outset, the competition included two types of shows, traditional so-called classical firework displays and pyro-musical displays involving careful synchronization of the fireworks to a musical score. Since 1987, the displays have been exclusively pyro-musical. Over the years, the competition has carved out a place at the summit of the pyrotechnical industry. The leading firms in the world set their sights on participating in the Montreal event, striving to attain the highest distinction in their field. And the event is now considered the Olympics of the pyrotechnical world. I'm not certain that my eye and ear are sufficiently trained to recognize the difference between a pyro musical display and a classical fireworks display, especially since I have no freaking clue how to tell the difference between a bombette and a brocade. However, the world pyro musical doesn't appear in any dictionary that I know, and I have a sneaking sp suspicion that it was invented to make it easier to charge 65 bucks for your ticket and 20 bucks for parking. After all, everyone knows that the tops you'd pay for a classical fireworks competition is 20 bucks, parking included. I should also note that Catherine Trombley of Six Flags graciously comped me my tickets, and was even more gracious in not bugging me about how long it took to do this review. I don't have to worry about parking as I've walked across the Jacques Cartier Bridge to get there, and that's something that you probably might want to consider doing. It's an awesome, awesome walk. I'm certain that all of you know that fireworks were invented in China like something like 1,200 years ago. There's something about loud explosions of color in the night sky that makes just about everybody in the world go, ooh, and ah. Personally, my insides go kind of like all jelly-like when things go boom, boom, boom. Since you all know that, I'm not going to bother going over the history of fireworks and fireworks competitions. Whoops, my bad. Pyro musical displays. But what I can talk about is Atlas's show, or more specifically the show that Stefan Pelkey, Matthew Shea, Chris Bergeron, Mike Aschenbach, Sean Allison, Trish Harron, Gary Brazil, and Kayla Clark produced. 
Atlas, the company they work for, has been around since 1950 or so. It's based out of a tiny town in southern New Hampshire called Jaffrey, which is about a five-hour drive from Montreal. If you are interested, their show is ostensibly some kind of Fantasia thing. In the press fall to roll, they made mention of Mickey, a sorcerer's apprentice, and some Stravinsky music. The narration at the beginning of the performance made mention of something similar as well. If I mention that loud explosions of color in the night sky are wicked cool, or if you'd prefer that I be explicit, while the idea of a fireworks Fantasia was a valid one, it did not come through in any way, shape, or form in the show. Walt Disney's Fantasia was an attempt to make Mickey more famous and pretty much succeeded. In it, there's a segment called The Sorcerer's Apprentice, which I'm pretty sure you've seen, so I'm not going to rehash it here. But to suffice it to say, in the full film, Disney used the music of Bach, Tchaikovsky, Dukash, Stravinsky, Beethoven, Poncielli, Mussorgsky, and Schubert, all conducted by Leopold Stokowski. Atlas, in turn, used the music of Bach, Dukash, Tchaikovsky by way of B-Bumble and the Stingers. Saint Sands, Mussorgsky, Beethoven, Stravinsky, Vivaldi, Metallica, and ACDC, mostly played by this violinist, David Garrett. Personally, if I had to choose a classically trained violinist who crossed over to heavy metal, I would prefer that they chose Rachel Barton Pine. But I digress. Anyhow, Team Atlas set a new record for the number of things blown up during L'Internationale des Feux lauto Quebec presented by TELUS. Early in the competition this year, in June in fact, Team Aoki, fireworks from Japan, used something like 7,000 shells. Prior to this year, the record was held by this company Pyrotechnico from Italy, who used 6,600 in 2008. By my count, Atlas exploded about 7,400 things. A large part of the reason for this was that they had these awesome machine gun things that would go rat a tat 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 and not only spit Roman candles into the sky faster than you can say Jack Robinson, but were also on some kind of pivot so that instead of them going straight up into the sky, they were sprayed out in all directions. And since they had more than one of these machine gun things, they could actually use the Roman candles to make patterns as they were shot. I would guess that these awesome machines were a large part of the reason why the performance was so heavy on low-level fireworks. And while I can appreciate them, I prefer the ones that go way up in the sky and make really loud booms. As you can see, most of what I chose to show were the high-level stuff. I should also point out here that I deliberately ripped out the soundtrack for two reasons. A. YouTube's computers are sufficiently powerful to recognize David Garrett's performance on the soundtrack and as a consequence would slap advertisements all over the place. While I understand how and why they do this, I really am not a big fan of Mr. Garrett's music and so don't really want to participate in making him any richer than he already is. And B, since this video is an edited version of the Atlas show and edited to focus on the fireworks, not the music, when I was making it, the constant cutting in the middle of musical phrases drove me up the wall even faster and higher than Mr. Garrett's violin playing. From my perspective, when you shoot things that go bang and are really colorful into a summer sky, life is pretty gosh darn good. If you pressed me, I would venture a guess that an emphasis on low-level fireworks and a strong attempt to synchronize the music and the explosions might explain how a pyro musical performance tries to differentiate itself from a classical fireworks performance. But personally, I like it when things go way up high in the sky and go boom. But enough about my personal preferences. Why is it that a show by some band at Metropolis that is seen by about 1,500 people gets reviewed in multiple places, on TV, the radio, on paper, and numerous websites, while something like a pyro musical performance gets seen by upward of a half a million people, and after all the preview hype, you don't hear another word? I have no freaking clue, but I'm going to try and change that. As you might suspect, and as I have mentioned previously in passing, I would have preferred if Atlas Pyrovision had concentrated more on the high aerial stuff instead of focusing on low-level explosions. But that all being said, their low-level stuff was rather rocking. They did an interview that was published on Montreal-Fireworks.com where they discussed how important it was to have a wow factor. Their show had plenty of wow factor. I bought into the show at the beginning, where normally you would expect the pyrotechnicians to quote, blow their load, unquote, at the end during the finale. The fine folks from Atlas actually led with what could be called a finale, or should I call it a beginning alley? How about we actually just call it a really good beginning? There's something like two dozen big-ass things that went high in the sky and had amethyst centers and white sprays, probably something as simple as a chrysanthemum. But as I've said, I'm not up to snuff on my fireworks vocabulary. From there, they added a whole whack of low-level stuff which seemed to get the crowd all giddy and excited, almost like a finale at the beginning, i.e. a beginning alley. From there, they attempted to settle into something that I would call more standard pyro musical performance, or at least if my definition and understanding of a pyro musical performance is what yours is, lots of synchronization between the bangs and the notes and an attempt at some kind of color coordination between the various things that were exploded. And while what they did, exploding colorful stuff in the night sky, can be called standard, the way they did it and what they chose to explode was anything but standard. 
For the most part, the colors and their coordination were pretty gosh darn good. Did I mention that they wanted to go in Jupiter? However, after having seen it a gazillion and a half times in reliance on strontium and barium salts to make an awful lot of green and red shiny sparkly things, that went boom seemed a little bit excessive to me. It also could be that I spent an awful lot of time watching and re-watching the performance just before, during, and after the Christmas season and was already kind of overwhelmed by the complementary colors. I also don't know if that it is because it was the only color combination that I was readily able to figure out and all the other color combinations that they used were too esoteric for me, stuff like fuchsia mauve and tropical magenta, you get the idea, or if it might have been due to the red green thing being the only combination that was repeated enough for me to notice. Either way, beyond the reliance of the low level effects, I believe that there was just a little bit too much Christmas time colors, especially since it was the end of July. Of the 10 separate sections, the first four, the Bach Toccata thing by Garrett, Carnival of the Animals, Nut Rocker, and Night on Bear Mountain, were extremely impressive, the kind of stuff that grabs an audience by the short and curlies and doesn't let go. Unfortunately, the next five sections weren't up to the same standard. This is not to say that they were bad or deficient, just that the first four sections set a standard that was kind of high. I think I have mentioned already that they want to go Jupiter. The middle part's heavy emphasis on green and reds made it look kind of cliched and to my were too dependent on low-level fireworks. And yes, low-level fireworks are good and can be great, but personally, I like the stuff that goes way up in the sky, explodes in a really big way, and makes an even bigger bang. I don't know if the fine folk from Atlas prefer to use low-level effects because they're from a small town or if they're easier to set up, somehow I doubt that, or for some other reason. But there is a big difference between shooting something and making something explode. As I've said, I'm firmly in the blow it up camp. In order to blow it up, it needs to be way up in the sky. Also, while I'm not an expert, it strikes me that there are a larger variety of things that can be exploded high up in the sky than there are that can be shot off as low-level effects. Once they are way up in the sky, you can vary not only the color, but the shape, the size, different parts of the explosion, and any after effects. The low-level effects also have, can have their colors change, but beyond that, I don't think there's much beyond angle, speed, height. Well, there were a couple of times they used the serpent tail as well, and duration, all of which can be very good stuff that goes high up in the sky and goes boom as well. I've already mentioned the music in passing. Remember how I wasn't the biggest David Garrett fan? Overall, I gotta grudgingly accept it and say it really doesn't make anything worse because it is the kind of over-the-top electric violin using simplified arrangements in order to appeal to people's baser emotions. Kind of like the same emotional response that exploding large, loud, and colorful things in the sky would get, even more so after a couple of drinks. Somewhat similar to the soundtrack to Fantasia, David Garrett, while probably a nice guy and accomplished violinist, ends up pouring something soft and gooey over any piece of music he plays. His insistence on a rock and roll drum kit and trying to emulate Jimmy Page on his violin doesn't go a long way when he's trying to show nuances in the music. On one side, this is perfect music for a pyro musical display, but then again, so are Metallica and ACDC. In the Folk at Atlas, the side that was better to use David Garrett's covers of Metallica and ACDC instead of the real thing. Most of the performance was rhythmically based with shots being synchronized to the playing of the music. As with everything about the show, it was done very well. However, I can't help but wonder what could have been had they followed musical phrases instead of notes or tied the explosions to emotional reactions to the music. In the same way that ballet steps do not rigorously stay in lockstep to the music, perhaps choosing color or shape based on the instrument, chords, or key kind of like a reverse leitmotif. Since there isn't really any figurative work in any pyro musical performance, you'd figure there would be some sort of connection to or with some of the more abstract arts. And while I haven't seen as many pyro musical performances as I would like, I really haven't gotten anything like that from any reading or discussion I've had about them. Maybe it has to do with the ephemerality of them, or perhaps it can be attributed to their inherent popularity. I'm not certain, it probably isn't that simple. This coming year, I'm gonna try and make my notes in a slightly different manner, concentrating on the colors, effects, and textures and how they get combined. I definitely believe the pyro musical performance can be critiqued in the same manner as any other art form, be it painting, dancing, sculpture, or music. And finally, I should mention that it was about 23 degrees, that there were thunderstorms in the air, but other than a brief misting at around 8.45, there was no precipitation at the wrong. There were, however, some clouds, and the wind was coming from the west-northwest, according to Environment Canada, at about 13 kilometers an hour. Overall, between the clouds and the wind, there was a very pronounced sensation of being enclosed. Not quite trapped, but definitely constrained. And I gotta apologize again for taking so gosh darn long to get this done. With a little luck, the next one won't take so long. With a little bit more experience, the next one should be infinitely better too. If you'd like to see the whole performance and not just my chopped up bits, click on the link at zeke.com. I made a collage of the four videos I was able to find and then synchronized them. It was extremely helpful in writing this up. 
as my memory of the night has an awful lot more adrenaline from the explosion than nuanced commentary about the colors.